Good evening and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada around the world. My name is Tahir I. Qureshi. I'm a fellow of Los Institute of Canada, broker of record for City Pro Realty Inc. Brokerage. I'm your host. Tonight we're going to talk about ethics and morals in real estate. As you know, we have shortage of supply in the marketplace. All political parties has promised and now we have a government they will be working on to increase the availability of more houses or provide funding for the project for affordability of housing in Ontario and across Canada. But the real issue is what are the challenges that we are facing now, right now we have a shortage of supply and there are multiple bidding happening. In my last episode, I pointed out to you that there was a 39 offer on one property in Lisgar community, Mississauga. Property listed for 1099000 was sold 1.625. Why? People are willing to pay the price they want to buy the property. Are the buyers are able to afford it? Obviously, they arrange the financing. As a real estate professional, we have ethics and morals to follow as we present our buyer. We have to calculate the value, estimated value, a reasonable approach to make sure what we are providing services to our client, they can afford it, and then they can make informed decision. It happens recently in our brokerage, a buyer submitted a multiple offer and refused to deliver a deposit. deposit. When you have a committed buyer who bought, who, put, who bid on it, you as a real estate professional represented that person, the buyer, then you refuse to give deposit. So when you are negotiating and representing on behalf of the buyer, what is your ethical and moral duty to make sure you don't risk? What happened if you don't deliver a deposit? This is treated as a breach of an agreement. It's going to put seller and the buyer both at risk. Seller has to sell the property again, and the buyer on the hook because he or she has made a commitment to buy the property. And there is a potential for litigation and disaster of relationship because we are hearing buyer think that he paid over property, but who forced the buyer to buy put a higher price. Was it realtor pushing her, her or he, him to put an offer more than they can afford? Are they licensed to practice what is the real value of the property? How the decision was made that they regret that making that decision? The agreement is supposed to be in a good faith, good intentions to carry on the promise that you made to make the deal. What happened? Now there are the legal issues. You have to contact with a lawyer, get your talk about mutual release, and who is going on the hook if you have a situation where the property does not sell for the price that has been sold because it was a multiple bidding offer. So you have created that environment and what you as a real estate profession has an obligation on Reba and a real estate business broker, and this is the book. What is your ethical duty, professionalism, when you are asking a buyer to put an offer? Are you competent? Are you honest? Are you competent? 
when you are making the offer on behalf of the bar, because you are the one who is providing the data to make your client to make a decision. I plan to write, write to our registrar to get some guidance about this, because when you refuse to give deposit and the deal has been done, obviously it becomes a, a, a challenging. And we need some guidance there for our realtors, so I'll be sending a request to our registrar to give us some guidance on that. Apart from an illegality or ethical and moral responsibility as a real estate professional, because we should not be wasting time of the seller if we know that our buyer is going to back out from it. And this is why we are talking today. And what will happen if the seller complained to real estate council that this is buyer did or the buyer agent did? Who gets in trouble? The person who was representing is the realtor representing the buyer. So this is why it's very important. First of all, when we are doing a, an offer, we, let's assume you're buying a representation and I'm representing the seller. So when you put an offer before you do that, you check their ID, you look at their source of deposit, you talk to make sure they have been pre-approved unless you have uh, pre-approval, unless you have a condition. But the offer was firm offer. That means there's no condition attached. So that means somebody has to be held accountable professionally as well as financially if the seller chooses to go further. But my question to you all of you, my fellow professional, is why would you put yourself in that situation? Why don't we avoid that and make sure our client is scrutinized, is checked, his credibility, his affordability is determined? Know your client. That is why you need to ask questions. Where is the source of income? How much they can afford? Did they get any pre-approval? Do they have any information to make sure when you're putting an offer or you are extending the offer or doing increasing the offer again and again, they have the resources to make sure they can complete the transaction. I'm talking about today, how in our brokerage, somebody did it. And this is why it's very important to talk about our ethics and morals why we are doing it, why we are wasting a list seller's time. What would happen that if that seller has never been able to sell that property again at the price that he or she has negotiated? So there are consequences of breach of contract. And literally, no matter what happens, realtors who are buying and selling get dragged into it because under the Real Estate Business Broker Act, the brokerage is responsible to represent their client honestly, competitively, uh, co and we are competently. We have the fiduciary duty to our client to protect their interest. So both sides, seller representative is protecting the seller, the buyer representative is protecting the buyer. But if you are not sure your buyer will go through this, you could be at risk of being complained against you. This is the issue that we are talking today. I will share with you some, more, some decision by Real Estate Council of Ontario about discipline happen because of one of our real estate professionals. We're not going to name is a general for education purposes. Goal is to increase awareness and building consumer confidence and promoting good ethics and, prof and business practices, professional business practices. So we're going to talk. So this is why it's very important when you are dealing with a buyer, particularly with the buyer, because right now there are multiple bidding offers. I was supposed to put a bid tomorrow something, there are already three, four offers already registered for the property. My client have agreed that we're going to put an offer tomorrow. So that means I have to do all the calculation to make sure my client can afford that property. If he or she cannot afford the property, 
even though we put the offer, but it was going to be limited to a certain amount. Beyond that is not justifiable. My client cannot afford it. And if you push someone to put an offer beyond their means, first of all, you're going to have an issue with the appraisal. No bank, if you are especially putting, if you're buying a detached home, definitely you're putting 20% and up. The bank is not going to risk their money. Bank wants appraisal. Because of what's going on in the marketplace, the price are going skyrocket. I was just looking at the report, a September report that came in. There was a 12.6% increase uh, from last August to this August. 12.6% increase in average prices in Toronto Region Real Estate Board for 416 and 95 area. So prices are not coming down because we have a shortage of supply. And at this moment, we are hoping our federal government and provincial government and municipality put their head together to come up with the idea to improve the process to expedite approval so we have more and more supply so then it balance out. Otherwise, we have no more immigrants are coming and you won't be able to afford. You already have a shortage of supply and more immigrants are coming. This is going to put a lot of pressure and with shorter supply, what is going to happen? Price goes up. And there is also potential because of interest rate will go up too very soon. If not, as we are projecting, maybe 2022, early first quarter, I expect that the rate will go up a little bit because it's too low. Because people are increasing their debts by borrowing more money. And small correction will cause the problem. I'm a principal broker of Canada Express Mortgage Inc., so I can talk to you about the mortgage as well. And this is why I recommend if you have a fixed income, even though variable rates are very attractive for you to pay less money and take a bigger mortgage, but if there is an increase, a quickly increase, you will not be able to negotiate if a fixed price at that time with your bank, unless you have a condition in your uh, agreement, mortgage, uh, low, borrow, borrowing agreement, where you can adjust the rate, I recommend you to have a fixed price so you know, firm fixed price for five years, that you have an amount that you have to arrange. Most importantly, for anyone who's buying a property, important thing is because of COVID and pandemic is opening up now. There will be more, hopefully, more properties coming from the marketplace. There will be more buyer actively pursuing it. And there will lots of business are opening. So there is a tremendous potential that our business will even go further busy and busy and busy in, in third quarter, starting from tomorrow. So important thing is income. How you afford your house is your income. You must have adopted and transformed your way of in revenue generation in this COVID pandemic. You have adopted new technology, new concept, new strategy. So you have transformed your business. Therefore, you know that if you are making decision this, this, at this stage when we are getting out of pandemic, offices are opening, businesses are opening, transportation, traffic is opening you have already prepared yourself contingency funds. You already know that you have handled, you can handle your finances, you, you already have a budget. It's very, very important as a part of know your client. As a mortgage broker, a principal broker, our uh, uh, mortgage business, we have to know our product and know our client. So that means we know financial information about our client when we are approving or recommending them to get approval everything about the financing, the, uh, how much the school expenses are for the kids, medical, uh, mortgage, insurance, autos, gift, wedding, clothes, everything. So we know financially he or she can afford that transaction. This is why it's very important for you to have a conversation with your client. Don't make discussions and serious decision when you are sitting in a car and you are bidding on it. You don't have time, you are under stress, and you are bidding a 15, uh, competing with 15 or 30 offers. 
that time you can may not be able to make a logical decision. Decision is made before you make an offer. You created a comparative market analysis. You discuss the details of the buyer, props and cons, and what are the limit. You don't go beyond the limit. Otherwise, you put an offer, it's accepted, and you can get a mortgage. Let's assume you got the mortgage, but the problem is appraisal came a little bit lower than what they are part for. Who's going to pay for their variation? So that's the duty of the realtors to make sure your client is well educated, they are well prepared, and you're doing more work. Lots of our realtors, they do CMA when they're selling it. They are saying, oh, there is no logic. Right now, properties are selling it. Because if you have a, motion, a buyer who's emotionally charged and put any money to put, get a property and then he or she can afford it, he or she can put herself in a big predicament. Legal repercussion, breach of contract, fail to complete the work, and also you fail your fiduciary duty to protect the interest of your client. These are the things that are very common and is very, very important for our realtors and also for the buyers and sellers. Please do not push your realtors to do something that you can regret it later on. You have asked the seller to transmit your offer. You sign it. You take the responsibility. But then it also creates an environment where consumer can complain. And I tell you, real estate council interior regulator will listen. They are very fair. They will listen to your complaint. If they see some ethical and moral issues, violation of the Real Estate Business Broker Act, they will take action. But if you have done something to cause harm to a realtor or real estate professional or registrar, they will tell you. They, they have not breached any, any code of ethics. So again, this the whole issue is work around. How do you work around the things to make sure ethically and professionally and morally you're not breaching Real Estate Business Broker Act? Any ethics, morals, especially when you're buying a property because uh, unless stress test is being changed, right now it's 5.25. Your qualification limit, you have to determine that, make sure your limit is set. If you are giving less than 20%, you are 5%, um, you go into loan to value, is, you are in high risk, you go to CMAC and you get their approval. It takes at least 48 hours to get approval the day, time an application submitted. So you cannot submit an unconditional offer because you don't have any financing. Pre-approval is only give you a feeling that you qualify. But it's not a commitment document. It has a condition with it. That means if you fail to satisfy those conditions, you won't be able to, to close that deal. Sometime, I think I mentioned in my program, one of the consumer called me, and the realtor removed the condition without even having a mortgage with them. There was no mortgage application. And I'm not sure at this moment that person was a realtor and the mortgage agent. And I helped them to solve the problem. They, they, got, they, they resolved this problem. But again, why to do it? Why you remove conditions when you, your buyer does not even have a mortgage approval? These are the ethical issues that we have to watch and, 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 and check. This is very, very important for us as a, as a real estate professional registrant. We have the responsibility. Our clients are making the biggest financial decision of their life to buy a property. and They want to live it and enjoy it with the family. And they don't want to have a stress in it. Sometimes you push people or, or seller buyer push you to buy a property a month later, two months later, they can afford it. They got AYZ to get the money and get the mortgage to cut through the process. And this is, I have a program it's called How to Avoid Mortgage Fraud. So if you are a member of Misaga Real Estate Board, go to mrep.ca and subscribe to this for the members is free program. And how to avoid mortgage fraud, I do that. And also there's a program, How to Achieve Success in Real Estate. You can subscribe. If you're a member of the Sagar Real Estate Board, 
uh, it's a free program. I'm volunteering for that. And if you are a realtor, but you're not a member of Misaga board, I believe there's a $20 that you go to the, pay to the board, board normally give it to the charities. So go learn from it. Our goal is to improve ethics, professionalism, learn knowledge, acquire knowledge. Get designation program. You can learn a lot about it by connecting, networking with people and professional. Volunteer for the Misaga uh, Roste board or any Roste board that you belong because you will learn from your fellow friends who are colleagues, experience, expertise to help you to make sure that you achieve success in real estate. So the topic is more of ethics because right now there are multiple offers going on. Every offer is multiple. I practice in Mississauga, so I'm telling you every property. It doesn't matter how it looks. People say, oh, this is old, it's a bad. Believe me, there are multiple offers because there's no other houses. Because you have to look into, see, the house, where you work, where you want to live, where your kid wants to go to school. If you can afford it, you're welcome to stay in the city. Otherwise, you may have to go away from the city. You may have to incur more costs, traveling expenses, go train, or buses, or gas expenses, maintain the car. These are part of costs. But when you sit down with the realtor and you evaluate everything, how much it cost me for me? This is my gross income, my family. This is my expenses. This is potential income because mortgage, every mortgage brokerage has a website where you can create your affordability. And you can look at the mortgage calculation. You can calculate mortgages. So you know that most brokerage have their own mortgage agent or company working with them. They can tell you how much you can afford. Then you also sit down and say, what are my expenses? How many cars I have? How much insurance I have to pay? How much maintenance I'm doing? Or hospital, special needs of your children, your medical expenses that are not covered by HOIP, you have to pay for it. insurance, auto insurance, home insurance, then school fees, college fees, university fees. You have uh, clothes you, you buy, grocery, all these expenses, and Visa, MasterCard, you have to pay. These are all expenses. When you sit down with a realtor and you have this kind of discussion, you feel comfortable that you are in good hand, the person who's going to represent you, and he's going to protect you to make sure you don't make wrong decision. This is very, very important for you to, 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 to select. I'm a fellow of Rose Statue of Canada. I'm also a certified international property specialist. I'm a certified real estate specialist. I'm a senior real estate specialist. I'm a senior serving seniors. I'm a seller representative specialist. I'm a credit real estate, uh, a credit buyer representative. So all these credentials give me more knowledge and power to serve my client. And this is why I encourage all my fellow realtors to seek out. Go to mrep.ca uh, and uh, get those uh, designation program. We can help you. I'm a chair of education committee. Uh, I'm a board director of Ms. Sagar's the board. Our goal is to help our fellow realtors to become a powerhouse, knowledgeable, serving your client. So this is why it's very important. Before I start the program, I just want to point out to you, you are watching Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment. Awaz Entertainment is available worldwide on Awaz ENT 580, and it's satellite cable TV, and you can watch around the world. So if you are involved in real estate, mortgage, construction, developer, lawyer, any type of business, and you watch Realty Coffee Talk, you call Ms. Jabin. She will give you a special uh, discount price. You can advertise monthly on uh, with us. That you can call 647-484-0018, and they will ask them, tell them that you are watching Realty Coffee Talk, and they give you a very special discount. If you have your own 30-second video, they charge about $500. If they need to create one, and they, they charge about $1,000, is advertised 10 times a day for 30 days. And you can't beat this price because Awaz Entertainment is watched everywhere. So we're going to take a short break now, and then we'll come back and we continue our conversation. We'll talk about some disciplinary action by Real Estate Council of Ontario. They are regulator in the province of Ontario to govern the real estate business in Ontario. Take a short break. 
पूरे ऑन्टेरियो में लाखों लोग अपनी कोविड 19 की वैक्सीन हासिल कर चुके हैं हेल्थ कैनेडा की मंजूरशुदा तमाम वैक्सीन महफूज और अस्पतालों डॉक्टर्स के दफातर फार्मेसी और आवामी वैक्सीनेशन के मुकाम आरोप हासिल है अपना किरदार अदा करें अपनी वैक्सीन हासिल करें तीन सौ जुबानों में मदद के लिए ऑन्टेरियो डॉट सी ए स्लैश बुक वैक्सीन आरोप जाए या एक आठ 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 नौ 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 छः चार आठ आठ आरोप कॉल करें पाकिस्तान का सबसे मशहूर एक्स्ट्रा लॉन्ग ग्रेन मुगल बास मते राइस अवेलेबल इन बोथ व्हाइट एंड सेला होम डिलीवरी इज अवेलेबल सब्जेक्ट टू मिनिमम ऑर्डर एंड रेडियस ऑल्सो अवेलेबल एट योर नेबरहुड फ्रेश को मजीद मालूम के लिए आज ही कॉन्टेक्ट करें फाइव वन फोर डबल सिक्स थ्री जीरो फोर एट जीरो आरोप या ऑर्डर करें हमारे फेसबुक ऐसी बनाए ये रमजान और भी खास मुगल बासमती के साथ द प्रीमियम चॉइस फॉर प्रीमियम टेस्ट दो हजार बीस का लाजवाब ऑफर जहां हम जीरो परसेंट फाइनेंसिंग पर आपकी मन पसंद कार दे रहे हैं फ्री विंटर टायर्स और साथ ही हम मुफ्त ऑयल चेंज भी दे रहे हैं वो भी उम्र भर के लिए अभी आए और इस लाजवाब ऑफर का लुत्फ ले जल्दी करें आपका खुश हमारे आउटलेट में जो कि 60 क्विंट्स प्ले ड्राइव एट इंटरसेक्शन क्लोज टू हाईवे 27 एंड रेक्सडेल ऑपोजिट टू वुड बैंड रेस ड्राइव जल्द से जल्द इस ऑफर का लुत्फ लें। आज ही कॉल करें सुनील अग्रवाल को 647-703-0218। देखिए खेल की आवाज जुमा शाम 6 बजे कैनेडियन मोजे हर बुध रात आठ बजे रियलिटी कॉफी टॉक हर जुमे रात शाम सात बजे टुनाइट टॉक हर जुमा शाम सात बजे देखिए तकरार कीजिए तकरार समीना जबीन के साथ हर रोज रात नौ बजे और रिपीट सुबह नौ बजे आप देख रहे हैं आवाज एंटरटेनमेंट आवाज आपकी चैनल हमारा जुड़िए हमसे गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू रियल टी काफी टॉक ऑन आवाज एंटरटेनमेंट इन कैनेडा राउंड दी वर्ल्ड माई नेम इज ताहिर आई क्रैश एम ए फेलो ऑफ रोज एश्यूर ऑफ कैनेडा ब्रोकर ऑफ रैकेट फॉर सिटी प्रो रियल टी इंक ब्रोकरेज आई एम योर होस्ट नाइट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एथिक्स एंड मोर इन रियल स्टेट बिकॉज ऑफ मल्टीपल ऑफर हैपनिंग शॉर्टेज ऑफ सप्लाई Lots of things can happen. We have to be make sure that we are in compliance to Real Estate Business Broker Act. Breaching of contract will cause you pain and penalty, penalty and and disciplinary action by Real Estate Council of Ontario once is reported by a consumer. I'm going to give you some examples, some decisions that were made by a Real Estate Council of Ontario without naming anything. A purpose is to educate you, consumer, as well as the realtors, to understand the complexity involved. How minor thing can cause a problem. This case, in this case that I'm going to discuss, a a realtor was pay, was charged fined four thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. For not fulfilling his duty under Section Three, Fairness, Honesty, etc., and Unprofessional Conduct, Section Thirty Nine of Rules of Business Broker Code of Conduct. What happened? Buyer was supposed to take inspector to do an inspection of the property. when a buyer was at the at the house you are required as a realtor buyer agent to be present on the property when a buyer and the technician who is checking the hvac is present in the property and this gentleman left unattended The section three says, a registrant shall treat every person the registrant deals with the course of a trade in real estate fairly, honestly, 
and with integrity. The buyer broker booked an appointment with the listing agent to be present during the inspection at that time. He was not honest because he left after leaving the inspector and the buyer of the property without being present. Unprofessional, section 39, unprofessional conduct. A registrar shall not in the course of trading in real estate engage in any act or omission that having regard to all of the circumstances would reasonably be regarded as a disgraceful, dishonorable, unprofessional, or unbecoming a registrant. So he agreed to pay $4,000 and he was disciplined. So if you are a seller and if you are confirming an appointment for the buyer to make sure the realtor stays with the buyer inspector or HVAC mechanic or the maintenance contractor that is coming to the site, as a realtor, if you are representing the buyer, Make sure when you take the key out from that lockbox, you access the property, you have permission of the seller that you're going to be present during the inspection and tour of the property. Otherwise, seller have the right to complain and you could be disciplined. There is a decision made on April 30th, 2020 by Real Estate Council of Ontario. This is another interesting subject, promises. Remember, we have many discussion about the promises. You have a BRA, buyer representation agreement. It has a schedule. You can add a schedule A. If you agree to compensate a buyer for closing cost or gratuity or any amount, Make the amendment. Buyer, please, if you are working with a realtor, you enter into an agreement where you are ex expecting it to receive some compensation. If you agree to do that, then make sure it is in writing. In this case, Real Estate Council of Ontario fined $15,000 to the registrant. So, be careful. Now, what happened? I'm not going to name anyone because these are the CN available on RICO website. You can go pick it up. The decision was that the buyer was arranging a mortgage. And remember, we talk about responsibility. He or she could not make the mortgage approval. They need to extend the time. The agent agreed to give some money to that buyer to make this deal could be a hefty commission then he could not he or she could not make the uh, arrangement for financing so they have to seek additional time extension so they have to incur costs for the lawyer and administrative costs so the buyer agent promised that buyer yes you get this time extension i'll pay for the lawyer all the extension document. Third time, the deal did not close, they need another extension, 15 days. So he got another extension, and the buyer agent said, I'll pay for it. And then deal did close, but the agent refused to pay the commission. And this talk about section, um, section 4 and 5, of RIBA, section 2.1, respect of section 14 of the Code of Ethics. It also breach section 3, 5, 35, 37, and 38 of the Code of Ethics. And he was fine. And then, obviously, section 39 and, and paragraph 14 and 15. And at the end, he agreed to it, and he was fined $15,000. So why? Why to breach? Why to breach? Why don't you do it in writing? 
as a registered professional, I encourage you to sit down with your buyer client and if you have a situation where you are helping someone, because that's all. the only reason is, is to, to give some money is you want the deal. If you're willing to give the money to make the deal that you put in black and white, make an amendment to the agreement of uh, the BRA and put it black and white, your broker of record will do it. He will not have no knowledge of the, that you have promised a buyer. And the buyer will complain who is going to go. Consumer Protection Agency, who are they? Real Estate Council of Ontario, or regulator is a consumer protection agency. They will take dis disciplinary action, and now you have gotten a disciplinary action against you, and it remains in your record. And if you repeat anything again, they might revoke your, your license. This is why it's very, very important to any time you make a commitment and you make a promises, verbal promises, consumer is relying on you as a real estate professional to guide him, him or her. If they rely on that small contribution from you, there's something fundamentally wrong. Why it took three time time extension to renew, the, uh, the, the, to get the mortgage? That means there were challenges in there. Why would you do that? You have to work on it beforehand and make sure that buyer who bought the property is able to afford it. Because other challenges, what will happen if down the line he or she will breach the, uh, the, uh, the mortgage agreement and he defaults on payment? Who is responsible? You already see the struggle through arranging the mortgage. Before you have negotiated a firm deal and then it appears, firm deal, and then you are arranging a mortgage. This is no good. You have to arrange a mortgage before. So, so $14,000 fine, and your, and your record is now tainted with this disciplinary action. Now, here's an interesting one. Another one. This is about right away. We, under Section 21 of Real Estate Business Broker, is called finding facts, material facts about a property when you're buying and selling. I'm not going to go into details. Again, I'm going to point, point out to you the effort for educating the consumer and also our fellow realtors. When you are listing a property for sale, you have ethical moral and legal obligation to provide the material facts about the property. If you think that you have to breach the agreement, uh, BRA, uh, Real Estate Business Broker Act to get a business, walk away. Because you, this is our livelihood, buying and selling real estate is our livelihood. We can't compromise. We put, uh, we put food on the table, we put our kids through university, school, and colleges, we can't take risk. We have to demonstrate integrity, professionalism, good ethic. Good ethic is a good business. So if you have a situation when you're presenting a, offer, a, a property, you're listing a property, make sure you find the facts about the property. This decision was done in August 31st, and the agent was fined $8,000, and I'm going to tell you why. The person, I'm going to make story short, by a listing agent, list the property, and in the comment, he or she mentioned that this property has a lake access. That means it has a right of way, access to the lake. The buyer bought the property. Relying on the buyer or the listing information on MLS. We're supposed to put correct and accurate information when we're certifying it. It put the agent and the brokerage at risk when you're misrepresenting it. 
because most cases, all brokerage are corporations, partnership, or sole proprietorship. Mostly, let's talk about corporation. So you are putting a corporation at risk. I hope that the broker record, we always trained our agent and brokers who are working under, re, uh, under our brokerage, they're trained to do certain things, not to breach RIBA, because we're a complying officer. We want to make sure everything is done appropriately. So this person listed on the MLS, small statement, this property has a access to the water. So the buyer bought the property, moved in. After a week or so, he said, okay, let's go walk to the lake. I'm just giving you an example. Walk to the lake. Somebody stop him. What are you doing in my property? He said, no, I have a right of way. This was on MLS. He said, show me the paper. Land registry doesn't have that. That's why you check Geo Warehouse. You check it out. Buy those uh, registered. It will show you everything, what the, what the liens are. Sometimes it's a good idea to buy that registered to see what the liens are, what the mortgages are, what are the challenges are with the property, are there any restrictions on it. That's why you buy that, that report. You spend 30, $30, $35 for that. So he was stopped. Then he approached the buyer, as the, the, his, his uh, realtor. And then issue came in, and they end up in complaining to RICO because it was a misinformation falsification. So section, they applied a various section of the code. They talk about is uh, she advertised inaccurate information about the property, listing, section 4, 5, and 38 of Code of Ethics. And obviously, she also uh, contravened Section 4, 5, 21, and 38 of the Court of Ethics. And she, she or he was fined, uh, how much? $8,000. She agreed. She or he agreed to this. So it also created a, a legal issue. If the buyer can enjoy this property, RICO doesn't go into compensation or any dispute or right of the buyer or seller they don't get involved. They, all, their limitation is strictly disciplinary action relating to uh, Real Estate Business Broker Act. And obviously, the buyer or seller, if they were felt that they were breached, they might have a, a charge. They might pursue legal action. But they might not pursue this action. But again, idea is to do your due diligence to avoid any mistakes and in compliance to the Code of Ethics of Real Estate, uh, um, Real Estate Business Broker Act. This is very, very important. So you're watching Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada around the world. I hope this program was any value to you. If you have any question regarding this program or in real estate or mortgage, you can call me directly on 416-451-3489. I'm a real estate broker of record for City Pro Realty Inc. brokerage and also principal broker of Canada Express Mortgage Inc. license 13241. And if you want to advertise on Awaz Entertainment, please call uh, Ms. Jabeen at 1-888-786-9809. She will be more than happy to give you a special discount because you are a viewer of Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada around the world. So I shall see you next Thursday with a new topic at 7 p.m. on Awaz Entertainment. Bye for now. May God bless you all. May God bless Canada. Thank you.